Welcome back to another update video for Amped5. We have a huge update to show you today. In this update, we will be looking at three brand new filters. And we'll also be looking at how we've changed our convert DVR feature. The first filter we'll look at is our annotation filter. The annotation filter will be familiar to our Amped Replay users. This filter allows us to make annotations onto still frames or videos. Firstly, we can find Annotate under our group presentation. After we select Annotate, it will automatically be added to our chain. And you'll see that we get this option of all these different annotations that we can use. For this example, we're going to be using the Magnify annotation to start with. The Magnify annotation allows us to magnify a particular region within our frame. It's really simple to use. And all we need to do is click and drag and create our selection. If we've got our selection, we can move it anywhere within our frame. And then we can take the center dot and place that on our subject. You'll notice as we go through the annotations that each of them have their own settings to allow us to customize them further. To magnify, I've added a border and then I've changed the color. Next, let's have a look at the hide annotation. With the hide annotation, we can select regions of our image that we want to pixelate or blur. In my example, I'm selecting a region around the knife that the suspect is holding. Once I have my selection, I can go back to the filter settings and here we can change the strength of the effect. Okay, so let's move on to the last annotation of the video. Here we're gonna look at adding text to our frames. In the filter settings, I've customized how I'll have my writing appear. If you've chosen your desired settings, you can simply click and drag and create a region on your frame where you're going to insert any information that you want. So here I've just simply put information wanted and call this number. We've made all of our annotations intuitive and simple to use. Even after creating your annotations, you can continue to customize them or move them around on your frame or your video. In total, we have nine annotations for you to use and experiment with. The next filter I would like to introduce to you is our picture in picture filter. With picture in picture, you're able to display a smaller image or video within another video. There's a multitude of ways you can use this to display your multimedia evidence. In this example, I'm gonna take a video and I'm only interested in a certain region of this video. So I'm going to crop that out. But when I crop it out, I'm also going to end up cropping out the timestamp. So with picture in picture, I can bring back the original timestamp of the video and place it within our new video. So here I've cropped that video out and you can see that we no longer have that timestamp. And I'm going to continue to set up my chain so that you can see how it can be used. So here I've got my cropped video and I no longer have the timestamp and I'm going to be bringing the timestamp back, but I don't want to overlay it straight onto the video. So I'm going to increase the frame size so that I can place the timestamp underneath the video. With picture in picture, because you're overlaying a video on another video, you need two separate chains set up. So here we have our first chain set up, which is our main video. Next, you see that I've made a new chain and this is just gonna be for the timestamp. So I've brought in that same video, but now we're only gonna be cropping out the timestamp. The video was interlaced and I deinterlaced the main video. I will also need to deinterlace the timestamp. In this video, I'm just showing you one way that we can use picture in picture, but there's so many different ways that you could use it. Okay, so now we've got our two chains set up. So now it's time to apply the picture in picture. You can find this filter under the group link. Okay, so we've got the picture in picture filter applied. So first we need to make sure the background and the foreground input are looking at the right filter in our chains. Now that we've got our input set up correctly, we can go to the selection and choose where we want our foreground video to be placed. In this instance, it's going to be our timestamp. We can then move that input into the center and the middle of that selection. 
Finally, we have the option to add a border to this as well. And you can see that we end up with our selected region of video, but we're also retaining that original timestamp. Okay, next we have another filter that we've put into Fife. This is called Convert Frame Rate, and it's different to our already existing Change Frame Rate. Convert Frame Rate allows us to change the frame rate, but it won't affect the playback speed of that video. In our example, if we look at the file info, we can see that we've got a video of 30 frames per second. So let's go find convert frame rate and we'll apply it to the video. Once we've applied the filter, if we look at the filter settings, there's only one setting for us to change and this is the frame rate. So I've changed our video from 30 FPS to 25 FPS. With the change enabled, if I play back the video, you can see that the speed hasn't been altered. It works by either duplicating or removing frames. We've updated our convert DVR feature so that now when you either stream copy or transcode a video, the output video will be renamed and it will tell you if it's either been stream copied or transcoded. So first, let's open convert DVR and we'll apply a stream copy if possible or else transcode. Previous versions, if we ran this, without doing some investigation, you wouldn't know whether the video was transcoded or if it was stream copied. In this example, you can see that it was stream copied because in the name, we've got this dash SC. If instead, convert DVR couldn't stream copy, it would transcode. And here's an example of how that would look. Instead of the dash SC, we get dash TC. Thank you again for joining us and we'll see you next time.